Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Audrey Modi. I'm PhD and process engineer in Fluid Air. Today, I have a real pleasure to present you an innovative electrostatic spread wire for thermosensitive compound. So it's a long presentation and uh, I really hope that you will appreciate this really new innovative technology. So uh, to start, I'd like to, to, to give some information about microencapsulation. So it's a process of enclosing small particles, a liquid of a gas within a layer of coating of within a mattress. So the particle size is between one micron to two millimeters. You have two kind, we can say that, of, of micro particles. You have capsule, you have capsule oh, where uh, your active is inside and uh, you have a shell that we can say a coating really want to protect um, your active. And also you have something, a sphere, a microsphere, something that you have more homogeneous repartition between your active, that we can say there, and your, your mattress. So you have a really good uh, repartition uh, between both. So why we want to, to microencapsulate? So um, the first uh, things, it's to, uh, to protect the active ingredient. Um, of course, in pharmaceutical field for the IP, it's good to protect ingredient uh, from oxygen, uh, from light, for example, UV. And sometimes also it's good for detergent application to protect the consumer to the detergent to avoid to avoid to have some uh, issue in the skin, for example. Of course, it's also to have a good control release. Uh, it's a case when you want to have a control release in intestine for IP, and for that we use uh, an enteric coating uh, to to assure it's a good control release. We have also some application to mask desk odor color, for example in feed industry, uh, uh, we want to use, to avoid to use less and less um, antibiotics. And for that, essential oil and really natural product are used, And uh, but it's really smell a lot. And to be sure that pink, for example, or chicken, uh, hit this, we have to, uh, to mask the test. And also we microencapsulate to change the structuration to to, uh, to to have a, a liquid uh, go to uh, goes uh, to to powder. So um, the process to encapsulate, uh, you have three different uh, categories. The first one is a chemical with polymerization, cross-linking. The second one is the physical chemical one, like gelification, coacervation. And today we are really focused on the physical one and uh, in the physical aspect, you have solidification and evaporation. And today we are really focused on evaporation one. So when we say evaporation, we say drying. Um, today, uh, the two main um, drying process in, in the market and to, uh, in, in, to dry industrially. You have the freeze drying and uh, the that we say the conventional spray dryer. So today the freeze drying it's really great because when you have sensitive compound, sensitive thermal compound, uh, you can work at low temperature so it's, it's really great and you have a high yield for example for bacteria it's really used uh, because you have really high viability at the end of the drying. Um, but uh, the disadvantage of this technology is the particle size because you obtain a cake and this cake you have to mill it to obtain the good particle size that you need. And so you need to, to, add, uh, to add one process. Uh, it's a batch process also. So that means that if you have one issue with your batch, you have to put all your batch in the trash. So sometimes it's, it's really bad. And uh, of course, that we know uh, it's really time and energy consuming. 
So uh, to have something more continuous, you can use a, 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 the conventional spray dryer. So it's a continuous process. It's a large size equipment. You can have a really big installation, for example, in Australia for the milk. Uh, the main disadvantage is the fact that you have to use a really high temperature, higher than 100 degrees. And most of the time we work around 180 degrees C. And uh, the particle size that you obtain, it's really small. It's around uh, 3, 10 microns. So you need to, to add uh, a granulation. So um, the idea is to find something in the between that. That means that it works at lower temperatures than the conventional spread wire. That means between 35 degrees, for example, to 100, maybe less. And uh, to assure to have a high heat when you use a thermosensitive compound, working at continuous and also easily to do the scale up to a, a really large scale. So that's why uh, that electrostatic spray dryer uh, was developed after 10 years of uh, research and development. So uh, my first mind, to be honest, when I see this electrostatic spray dryer, uh, it was something really noisy like that. Okay, so to be honest, it's not noisy, but in, we can imagine that in the droplets that we create, it's something like really funny like that. So just to show you uh, what is an electrostatic spray dryer, so here you can see uh, the nozzle. Uh, it's a B-fluid nozzle where we apply an electrostatic charge and in this electrostatic charge apply so in the solution. We spray it in a tower like a, a conventional spray dryer and we obtain droplets that it's dry. So what is electrostatic spray dryer? It's so interesting and uh, what is really is the advantage to use it? Okay, when you have a conventional spread wire, what's happened? So if you imagine that this it's water, the, the blue one, so you you will start to dry. So it's it's really easy to, to dry because you are really a free water available to to dry. But at one time uh, you are in your we can say carrier and uh, it's really dif more and more difficult to your water to move at the surface to be evaporated so and you have your carrier start to dry so you have a creation of the cake of, uh, of the shale and it's the same when you do a cake on your oven you you create a, a shell a crunchy shell and this is this case and after if you want to remove the water stay in the middle it's it's really really hard you have to apply a really high energy and this energy is the temperature that you have to increase to remove the we can say the link water stay in the middle so it's like this that's work in the case of the electrostatic spray dryer when you apply an electrostatic charge uh, the water continue to move to the surface Every time when you have a charge, water uh, easily diffuses to, to the surface. So that's why you don't need high energy to, to evaporate your water because your water is available at the surface. And moreover, you have always something, this, this thin layer of water. So that means that you have a good protection of your active all the time during the, your drawing. It's the same phenomena when you you are in the beach, you want to, to go to the sea and we come back to the beach, you are really cold because you have this thin layer of your sink, skin, sorry. So it's, it's the same, it's the same effect. And uh, so we have, we don't need a high temperature to work and we have a good protection of, of, of our hard teeth. And uh, for us, when we do some trials, the most important aspect is the outlet temperature. So all the time when, when you have a new uh, application, we always check the maximum outlet or temperature that we can apply to the active and it works. So just give you a little bit more detail uh, because I explained you that the water 
move really faster. We have a high diff diffusivity of the water in the droplet that we create. So if you imagine this is the droplets that, that we create when you, with your spray. In the case of a conventional spray dryer, okay, we imagine that it's an emulsion. So your active, it's an oil. Uh, your solvent, it's water really easily. And your carrier, it's a modified starch, for example. And in this case, so you create your emulsion. You have a really good em emulsion with of, uh, of your oil. And you have a homogeneous repetition between your Maltodex, your modified starch, sorry, and uh, your oil. And after you have your water to evaporate. So in conventional spray dryer, that I, we said we saw before, you have to apply a really high energy to evaporate water. And what do you obtain at the end? You obtain something like really homogeneous between your oil here and your modified starch. But you have also oil at the surface so that means it's oil it's not well encapsulated and you can have uh, you can you can destroy your oil and if you are you have we say oil but oil could be an active or could be contained an active inside so that means that you don't have a high protection of it you need to coat for example to assure a good protection in the case of the electrostatic spray dryer so your water and it's your solvents so a really most polar component that we know it's water so water moves really faster to the surface so you have a protection during your drying easily to evaporate your water so you don't need a lot of energy that we explained uh, before and what's happened we can choose uh, the carrier uh, to be a little bit less, a little bit, a little bit more, sorry, polar that you active. So you active stay in the middle and your carrier move to assure a good encapsulation like this. So we have something uh, really, uh, let's say a mix between a, mac a macro, a macrosphere and, uh, and, um, sorry, a microsphere and a microparticles. And all of that are based on the polarity of the compound. We can start to work at 30 degrees C and to go up to 80 degrees C. It's how outlet temperature, so the most important. And uh, the moisture content is the same that we obtain with the conventional spread wire. That means we are below, one, below 5% and we have a really high encapsulation efficiency. Uh, for example, for oil, we can reach 60% of uh, encapsulated oil without oil at the surface. So it's it's really, really, really in interesting. And uh, it's for, for example, for food application, when we want to encapsulate essential oil, it's really, really interesting and for flavor too. So, um, how it works. So when you see that, it really looks like a conventional spread wire. You have a drying chamber, you have nozzle. The nozzle is put at the top. So that means you have a concurrent, um, a concurrent technology. Uh, so we have a spray at the, at, like that. So we spray, we spray at the top. You have the drying gas come at the top too and something like it start to be different to conventional spray dryer uh, we did as uh, a polar dryer the electrostatic spray dryer was developed to have a cycloning system to avoid to have a really high tower and to increase um, to increase uh, the time in the in the chamber after that, to compare with a conventional spread wire, we don't have a cyclone. We have directly a separation plenum with filter to separate the drying gas and the powder. So the powder fall down at, 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 at the bottom and you can use, for example, a pneumatic uh, system convoyer 
uh, to obtain uh, your your powder in a big bag, for example. So you have your you have you have your final product. So it's I don't say you that we have um, that the drying gas it's the nitrogen. So for two reasons. So the first reason it's a safety reason. It just to, to we we have electrostatic charge and powder so we have to avoid to have oxygen to uh, avoid exposure so that's why we use nitrogen but it's also because we are really focused on thermosensitive compound and to avoid also to have oxidation reaction it's great to work with nitrogen so we know that nitrogen costs more than uh, than air so that's why we really be careful to have a recirculation of, of nitrogen. So um, to assure a good recirculation of nitrogen, we need a dehumidification unit. And of course, we have a heater. We, uh, we just need to, to add some uh, nitrogen in pressure for the nozzle. So that's why we have a push event and we re-inject uh, nitrogen uh, in, uh, in, in, in the nozzle. So it's a continuous process uh, that I say you, I didn't maybe say you, be, just be before we use a B-fluid uh, B -fluid nozzle and we use a peristatic pump uh, to feed it. So a really interesting part. So uh, why? Uh, what is the really interesting application uh, with the electrostatic spread wire? So um, to be honest, uh, electrostatic spread wire uh, arrived in the market three years ago. So it's really a new technology, and uh, and I have I'm, I'm really happy to to have a, a model. Uh, uh, a laboratory model in my place uh, of electrostatic spread wire and we we discover every month a new application and it's it's really through uh, for example today i i dry something like a gum at uh, two percent of uh, solid mass content it's something that could be seems impossible for me with a conventional spread wire and uh, of course I try it and I really obtained powder. I, I was really surprised um, to uh, obtain something. And it's, it's not the first case. Uh, we have a university not so far to my place, uh, more uh, focus on the food application and nutraceutical application and they use macroalgae. I will present you this case of study. And uh, so they visit me and they say, oh, you, could you try to, to dry microalgae? I say, yes, of course we can dry it. They say, oh, you know, it's 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 really difficult with the conventional spread wire. We spend hours and hours to find the good parameter to dry it. And moreover, we use uh, we use air, oxygen. And uh, so in this case, we have an oxidation of the product. And uh, moreover, most of time we have to use a high temperature. So it's something like really, we obtain something like a burn powder. And um, it's, it's, it's really difficult to, to dry it. So I say, yes, of course, give me some, uh, some sample and we will dry. And um, it's, it's a true story. I just do a one shot. And after one shot, I obtain some powder. So it's, it's really something like magical, of course, sometimes uh, we have to optimize the formulation. We have to op optimize the operating parameter. But uh, for the proof of concept, most of time we just have to spray and you obtain powder after. Of course, you you have to optimize. But it's easy to optimize when you obtain something to start and to analyze. And uh, yes, you like that. You can analyze the moisture content. You can analyze the particle size. So it's, it's really an interesting um, technology and we have to continue to find really new application and I'm pretty sure that new application will be will be fine. And it's maybe uh, for your project that it's, uh, it will be it, it will be fine. And uh, today uh, I'm, I'm specialized in electrostatic spread area, but I'm not specialized for all products that we 
that we can spray. You see, you have a many application field, neutrocytic, uh, neutrocytic, uh, pharmaceutic feed, food. Uh, so it's really a large scale. So uh, you know your product, you know the limitation to dry your product, and uh, it's a pleasure to collaborate and uh, to find a good solution to dry uh, your, your product. So feel free if you have some question, I, I will put my email at the end of this uh, presentation. So really um, feel, feel free if you have some idea just to try with this very new technology. It's, it's really uh, funny and easy to be honest. So, uh, okay, I just, uh, just to, to come back on this, uh, on this slide. Uh, so uh, today, uh, okay, I selected this application. Uh, could be interesting for you, uh, of course, uh, to dry IP. Uh, so the idea of this picture, it's to explain, and I will show you a case of study, how it's possible to go directly to the direct compression, because the quality of the powder that you obtain could help to go directly to the direct compression and save a lot of time and, and, uh, and cost. We have also a lot of application for bacteria. I selected also for you a probiotics case of study, and uh, you will see it's we have a really really good viability and stability over the time. We have some application also for virus uh, to uh, to do vaccine, and if we go more on the fish uh, on the synthetical part. Uh, for example, to encapsulate fish hull, for example, DHA, it's, it's really famous um, for the health. Uh, for the health, you can also use uh, essential oil. It's really, really difficult to encapsulate essential oil because it's really a volatile compound. And uh, when you dry higher than 70 degrees C, uh, you are, it smells essential, it's, it's male flavors everywhere in your, um, uh, in your, in your facility. So it's really difficult to, to encapsulate and to have something really stable in the, during the storage. Uh, that I say you, we have also, for example, macroalgae application and uh, something that's interesting because in macroalgae, you can have some also really interesting omega-3 and uh, DHA again. Uh, we have also good application for, for dye because we use nitrogen, so we avoid oxidation of it. And, um, and moreover, the fact to work at low temperature, we don't burn uh, the color. The last one, uh, it's, uh, it's a functional food application. The fact that uh, to apply an electrostatic charge, we change the behavior of the powder we obtain a powder really more flowable and also with a high solubility. So it could be interesting uh, for, for, um, for one material in, in food application to, to save time during the preparation. So that I say you today, I prepare some case of study on probiotics, on AP, uh, direct compression, and on microalgae. Okay, just uh, give you a, a short word about probiotics, but it could be the case of uh, bacteria in uh, in general. So, why we when we want why we want to try it's to increase the stability of probiotic cell culture. So the main goal, wow, it's to obtain powder. But I say you that it's not so easy. Uh, of course, we need to have a water activity below 0.3 uh, just to assure between the storage that uh, we, we have enough stability parameter uh, to, uh, to assure a long shelf life. If you are higher than 0.3, you have two water and you, you, your bacteria will, will kill uh, during the time. Of course, you have to avoid inactivation during the drying process. And most of the time, you have to assure uh, hydration of the powder that you obtain. And you have to assure this hydration after one, uh, one year of storage. So it's, it's, it's really a big challenge. 
so it, that's why we need drying. Uh, but at the same time, when you dry, uh, you can have a dehydration inactivation, a thermal inactivation, an oxidative inactivation, and also a chemical inactivation. So that you can see, it's a, lo a lot of uh, um, things that could happen during the drying. So just to give you a little bit more detail about a freeze dryer. So when you start your freeze dryer with your bacteria, so just the freeze dryer today, it's the best technology to dry, uh, to dry bacteria. So uh, you start at ambient temperature and ambient pressure. So first you decrease your temperature to go up to minus 50, for example. And after that, you decrease your pressure and after to have decreased your pressure, you increase your temperature. So in, in this case, um, the main issue is the dehydration uh, because the fight um, to decrease your, your temperature in this, you create ice in, inside your bacteria. And after that, you have to remove this ice outside. So this is can damage uh, the shell of your of your bacteria. In the case of uh, of the spread drying, so you start at ambient temperature and you will increase your temperature to I don't know 100 degrees C. So in this case, you have a thermal deactivation. And you have also a dehydrated inactivation. Sorry. And uh, and yes, because you 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 change the shape of your shell and you really reduce uh, you really reduce it. But the fact that a spread drying it's a fast drying, you limit it uh, the dehydration uh, inactivation. Most of time, also to to reduce this effect, we use sugar. For example, trialose is the case of this study. And so the fact to use trialose, you can uh, the trialose help uh, during the drying to avoid to to destroy uh, the, the bacteria. But the main issue when you use this kind of product, it's the fact that you will decrease your glass transition and it's like that if you decrease your glass transition you can have an issue to obtain something like body rubber so when you dry you don't have to be in this glass transition phase because it is a case you will obtain something like body rubber and really really really, really uh, difficult uh, to dry and in this case, when you have these states, you have something with a high moisture content and really high water activity. So it's really not interesting. And most of time to assure to don't have this issue, you have to decrease your temperature, inlet temperature. But sometimes when you decrease your inlet temperature, it was not possible to dry with the spray drying. You have not enough evaporation efficiency uh, to dry. So that's why the fact to apply an electrostatic charge, it's interesting because in fact, to go up to 100 degrees, you just have to go to 300 degrees C, 305 degrees C. It's an in outlet, I agree. But it's something interesting. One, to avoid to have a thermal inactivation of your pod of your bacteria and also to work with a trialose to protect your bacteria during the drying and during the storage and work with a low temperature to avoid to have to be in the glass transition phase. So to be a little bit on a, on case of study, so we decide to, to follow uh, Lactobacillus plantarium and Lactobacillus casei. Uh, we cultivated, uh, we use uh, trialose for 
the electrostatic spread wire and sorry I forget to put it's a skill milk in the case of first wire so the idea it was to compare uh, to compare both technology we optimize uh, first wire with the skin milk formulation and we optimize polar dry using uh, tree aloes. The most important thing that I say you before, it's the fact that we have a outlet temperature of 37 degrees C. So it just, I really wanted uh, to have more detail before to compare uh, the results that we obtain. So uh, we check on the literature and we found uh, a, a publication of Cavalos and uh, in this publication they use Trialos Lacus uh, with the freeze drying process and that we can see in sorry in this um, table it's the, in this figure it's the fact is when they use Trialos or other to be to be honest it's really close uh, they lost three logs after six months. So it's interesting uh, information. We also check what's happened in the case of uh, spread drying process with a uh, outlet temperature of 70 degrees C. It's a uh, it's a public sorry it's a publication of lab series, and uh, we observe using. Uh, maltodextrin and trialose that after 100 days uh, in the storage at 25 degrees C they lost six log and uh, moreover uh, that I say you before Padana show that it's really difficult uh, with the spread wire uh, with the promotional spread wire to work uh, in this part you have uh, an interactivation temperature that's in case of lactobacillus plantarium he put at uh, 75 degrees C and the fight to use some sugar in this case of this uh, of, of this publication they have two they present two kind of sugar so you have two glass transition so that means that um, it's what's it you don't have to work between here and this in this part because you you will obtain something really rubber so you have to really work at a low temperature but when you work at low temperature your uh, water activity it's really really high it's that they observe so that's why also it's interesting to work on electrostatic spread wire because you can work at low temperature you apply another uh, energy to remove water that is the electrostatic charge and in this case you 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 avoid to have a really low most uh, really high most content you can help to really reduce your moisture content and you sorry and moreover your water activity. So it's when they say at low temp at low temperature, it's very really difficult to uh, to decrease the moisture content. And that we try with the polar dry electrostatic spread wire. So uh, it's it's the results um, that we that we obtain. Uh, firstly, we wanted to oops, to uh, to compare what's happened at room temperature storage for lactobacillus plantarium after six months. If you remember well, sorry, my next slide. Uh, it's, it, it was minus three logs for the freeze dryer. So that means that really improve um, the formulation. It was possible to optimize it at uh, with a loss of 1.2 so that means it's a really good result and uh, to compare with a spread wire it was not possible to uh, to have a storage after six months so it's it's a good um, it's really a good uh, result and uh, a good uh, stability over the time for six months in the case of the electrostatic spread wire the result was really really good because we only lost one log so in in this case um we we prove that we have the same viability and stability than first dryer in the case of uh, when we storage at 37 degrees c uh, that you can see we we have the same we can say the same curve 
but after after two months uh, we don't have any what's that uh, any, any uh, stability of uh, uh, for for the of the bacteria uh, drying with first dryer and this is really uh, the low the lower value because after that it's not possible to commercialize it and that you can see after six months we don't have a st a stability at all with the freeze dryer uh, also i wanted to show you uh, the result for lactobacillus case so we uh, we study we study uh, the lia Liao uh, publication uh, to check uh, to check the stability over the time that we have uh, for lactobacillus case and uh, the interesting point it's they use a spray dryer at lower temperature than uh, for the next publication on lactobacillus plantarium so they have uh, inlet temperature at 70 degrees C that uh, you can see at uh, 25 degrees C after six months uh, with the skill milk we have a loss of a minus eight log and trialos minus 1.5 log and we also wanted to check at 37 degrees C after two months we have a loss of minus two logs and minus uh, nine log so to be honest we are around by uh, we uh, around uh, really lost so that we can see after six months uh, in the case of lactobacillus case uh, with the freeze drying we have a loss of minus five log and electrostatic spread or your minus um, uh, 0.7 log sorry so uh, we have something uh, really close in this case and we also observe after eight weeks uh, with the first dryer we have a loss of minus 1.1 and with the electrostatic spray dryer minus 0.9 log so that is something a little bit better than that I show you before so uh, so it's what's possible and we can continue to optimize this but the main result is the fact that uh, using a conventional uh, electrostatic spread wire it was possible to dry probiotics and to obtain the same or higher stability and uh, viability just to conclude uh, i'll tell um, so that i say you it was possible uh, to use electrostatic spray dryer to obtain same or higher viability and stability than freeze dryer and with the freeze dryer where we optimize the formulation and the operating parameters that is interesting uh, to, to use electrostatic spray dryer first the fact to work at lower temperature like that we can avoid uh, thermal inactivation we use also nitrogen it's also an interesting point to avoid to have oxidative inactivation that i say you before the fast to use a fast drying uh, uh, spray dryer it's really fast drying to compare with a first dryer and also that we had a carrier inside uh, we can reduce dehydration inactivation and an interesting point is the fact that when we use an electrostatic charge we can increase the intracell trellis content so like that we have a really better protection of the cell and moreover we avoid to destroy and to change the shape of your, of your bacteria so like that we can utilize bacterial robustness during this process and the last point but not the least uh, we did the production cost uh, including including the invest um, the energy cost and also the labor cost and uh, the electrostatic spray dryer is four times lower than a first dryer so it's it's also an interesting really really interesting point i i just wanted to uh, give short word about 
uh, direct cooperation. We, we did a long time ago uh, some study uh, to, to check uh, the availability of, of the powder obtained by hydrostatic uh, spray dryer to go directly to the direct compression. So why it's interesting to have a direct compression process? It's to save time and energy. So what is interesting is to have a particle size for that between 100, 125 micron to 425 micron um, to assure to have a good flowability and uh, for that uh, to be sure to have an uniform repartition of the, of the powder and to obtain a, a, a good tablet with a good, uh, a good way and uh, a good bulk uh, with a tapered density so it's it's you have your tablet have to be the, have to have the same way as uh, the good thickness the good hardness to have a low friability and to assure a good dissolution and a good disintegration when you want to release it you release your active your your active active compound so uh, when you use an electro conventional electrostatic spray dryer that i say you before you obtain a particle size really really small that means that 5 20 micron so it's not uh, possible to to use a particle size to go directly to the direct compression you you have to to granulate uh, to, to granulate it so you have to add one or two steps in the case of, a of electrostatic spray dryer, we play on the electrostatic charge that you can see here. Uh, we can apply a really low charge. And when we apply a low charge, we have particles can stick together. So it's that's happened because particles still a little bit sticky because it's not a really dry air. And after we apply a really high charge, and in this case, we fix this agglomeration so we obtain something like really physical agglomeration so it's interesting because like that you can increase your particle size of course you have to play on your formulation to assure to have something enough sticky to to uh, to have um, to, to stick your particle together uh, you have also to assure a good flow rate uh, to, to have the good probability uh, of contact of your particles. But if you have on large scale, it's really easy to obtain. And like that, uh, you have the good particle size that you need uh, to go to the direct compression and, like, and avoid granulation, milling and all uh, drying steps. Uh, this is it's 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 one study that we did on uh, strawberry flavors it's not uh, exactly your ip but we never know uh, so that you can see in blue line it's a conventional spray dryer and um, that you can see the particle size it's really really low it's it's to be honest it's and it's not so small for a conventional spray dryer when the, we use an electrostatic spray dryer that's called polar dry uh, that you can see we obtain really large particles um, that we work today because it's a study that we did a long time ago now we obtain something really more like this we all we really play to reduce, to reduce the span of it and like that to obtain uh, a particle size we can set to 200 micrometer so you can go directly to the direct compression with the size of powder and of course uh, it's also dependent of uh, the behavior and the flowability of your powder. If we talk a little bit about the flowability of, uh, of your powder, so um, this is a modified starch uh, spray with a flavor too, but it's just to give you a comparison. And that you can see, uh, this is a conventional, this is a conventional spray dryer. This is the electrostatic spray dryer. And uh, okay, it's it's very really easy uh, to see the flowability. It's not the same. So why we have this um, first one? 
uh, it's due to the particle size that we obtain. And the particle size is really lower in case of conventional spread wire, so that's why the flowability is lower. And we have also the fact that the powder that we obtain with the electrostatic spread wire is lower hygroscopic than the conventional one. The porosity at the surface, in my mind, it's not the same. So that's why also we have a really uh, good behavior of the flowability because the porosity is not the same between the conventional spread wire and the electrostatic spread wire. And it's like that that we can increase the flowability uh, using an electrostatic charge. It's, it's just to give you an idea uh, of uh, tablets that uh, we, we did uh, with vitamin B3. And uh, so we use vitamin B3, corn oil, maltodextrin, modified starch, and we use electrostatic spread wire, polar dry to dry, and we use a punch process. And the idea was to, was to compare uh, the desegregation time using uh, vitamin C at uh, 1000 EU. 10,000 U and to compare with the co commercial ones that we can find in medicine and that you can that you can see first it's maybe the most interesting the free ability that you obtain it's really lower than a co commercial one and moreover the disintegration time it's lower than a commercial one so that means that using a conventional spread wire and it's the same, it was a really short uh, case of study. It was po it's possible to continue to optimize it, but the first result was really interesting to show that it's possible with a conventional spread wire, uh, with a little static spread wire, sorry, <laughs> to, uh, to have ta tablet with not friable and uh, with a good flowability and a good compressivity behavior. So uh, the last case of study that I wanted to show you today, it's a macro uh, Microalgae is something like, I really like it. I'm sorry, I'm come from food industry, and, but uh, it seems more and more interesting for a nutraceutical field and maybe not uh, for pharmaceutical field. And today it's also something to show you um, a compound really sensitive so to many many things it's really sensitive it could have oxidative oxidative degradation by light temperature the fact to change the ph and uh, it's so it's really really hard to to dry it um, but it's really interesting uh, to to uh, to dry it because inside you have a really good nutrient, vitamin, carotenoids, all really, really good for, for health and uh, omega-3. And it's also something could be replaced uh, the fish. So in in food industry, it's something so really interesting, but uh, something that's not so well known today. And uh, also, uh, we just start to, to find a drying process. So that's why we decided to, to do a case of study of it because it's really the good time um, uh, to, to help uh, the macroalgae industry uh, to, to dry uh, this, this product. So why it's interesting to dry? It's, it's the same, it's to increase uh, this, this uh, blah, blah. The shelf life, uh, it's to preserve the pigment inside and the pigment in carotenoids, so very good for health. And of, of course, to prevent oxidation and denaturation of the product and uh, also to mask the odor because sometimes it's really smell a lot. You can believe me. So we, we have a collaboration for this study with a French university. Uh, sorry, I didn't mention I'm French, but I think you, you understand it with my beautiful accent. So uh, we work with this university close to the sea. And uh, for us, they cultivate the macroalgae. Uh, they concentrate a little bit because it's always interesting when we work with uh, spread wire in general. 
uh, to have a concentration of mass content higher than 10%. And that we really wanted is to do a comparison of electrostatic spread, uh, conventional spread wire and electrostatic spread wire with the same uh, outlet inlet temperature. Oh, sorry, I'm start to be inlet temperature. So the first uh, result that we wanted to show you, it's okay, we follow the water activity, it's the same for bacteria, we prefer to be uh, below 0 0.3 and that you can see it was the case with the retrostatic spread wire but not with the conventional spread wire where we are higher than 0 0.3, um, 0 0.3 and moreover uh, when we decide to work at the same uh, inlet temperature at 90 degrees C, uh, we, to be honest, we start with the electrostatic spread dryer with, uh, I don't remember, X uh, normal cubic meter per hour and uh, with a, a solution feedstock at a uh, gram per minute. And that we observe that it's when we use this value, it was not possible to dry with the conventional spread wire. To assure that we can dry this solution, we had to increase uh, the gas flow rate and decrease, decrease uh, the solution feedstock. That's why we explain that to work with an electrostatic spread dryer, we use 30% less of energy than a conventional one. And this is due to the fact that it was possible with electrostatic charge to help water inside your particle to really uh, diffuse it easily to, to, your, to the surface. And uh, just we also wanted to check uh, today we really in this study we follow the pigment analysis and we measure the pigment gain between the electrostatic spread wire minus conventional spread wire divided by conventional spread wire and that we can see in the case of fluorophyll A that we follow and carotenoids it was possible to increase by plus in general plus 30% uh, your ping mangan using a electrostatic spread wire and in the case of chlorophyll C it was plus 150 degrees C so 50% sorry so it's it's really interesting to to use this uh, because uh, that you can see the, the color it's not the same so we have really a good preservation of, uh, of the pigment uh, using electrostatic charge and electrostatic spread wire moreover using a nitrogen because like that we can prevent oxidation and uh, denaturization. So what's happened when we check uh, SEM picture? So what's interesting firstly to, uh, to SEM picture that you can see if you see the scale you have at 5 micron and 10 micron in for the electrostatic spread, uh, conventional spread wire to compare with the electrostatic spread wire where you are at 20 micron and 10 micron. So that means that you are really an agglomeration effect uh, using an electrostatic charge. And something like really interesting, it's the morphology that we obtain for this macroalgae that you can see is nothing comparable between both. So that means that we already obtained something new. That means maybe new functionality. So we continue um, to work on it. And I wanted to show you uh, this nice video uh, about uh, wettability. We can say wettability. And also to show you the beautiful color of the powder that you obtain. Uh, the particle is a bit big. It's something that we really wanted, but we also play on the particle size. Um, to reduce the sedimentation time. Uh, for, uh, for feed fish, uh, it's interesting uh, to work on the sedimentation time. So we continue the study on, the, on this way with, with this university.
So we do the same for Macro Agae. We wanted to compare the cost position. Uh, we are really close that we obtain with uh, with uh, bacteria. So if we including capital cost, utility cost, labor cost, working switch shift, and um, 280 days per year. So uh, for Poradway, if we say that we are at one. For the conventional spread wire, the cost is 1.1, and it's close. To, it's higher than four in the case of the freeze wing. So it's it's really interesting when we take in count all the cost of um, capital cost, utility cost, and labor cost uh, to 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 use polar dry for sensitive uh, thermosensitive compound. Uh, this is a video, so uh, feel free uh, to check it. It's my colleague explain you exactly that I explained, but maybe with a better English accent. So uh, yes, feel free to to follow this link and uh, to uh, to see this video. And it's also interesting to do it because we we have also a, a CDF uh, video to explain how the cyclonic system is done in uh, in the tower. In the, in the drawing chamber. So just to conclude, so uh, electrostatic charge work uh, with the electrostatic effect. Uh, the fact to apply a first energy, you don't need to apply a high temperature, so you can work at low temperature. Uh, the fact of that, you play also on the on the polarity of the compound, so you can increase your encapsulation efficiency. You can also play on high and low. Uh, charge and like that create a granulation so you can do all in the same process it's in a continuous process we really be careful to have a recirculation of nitrogen and we have a really good scalability uh, of each uh, model that we have okay except maybe the small small model that I will present you so just a short word about where we are. So uh, firstly, work about the uh, the spraying system. Uh, I'm Frida. Frida, it's a division of spraying system. So spraying system, it's a nozzle company specialized and uh, with um, a global and regional engineering and manufacturing. I think we have uh, 10 manufacturing plants around the world. And uh, so we deliver nozzle. So that I can, you can see, uh, we have a really manufacturing, a lot of manufacturing as all the world. And so Fluid Air is a division of uh, our spraying system. It was created in 1983 and joined um, and spraying system in uh, 29. So we are specialized in fluidized bed process, ice granulation, size reduction, process automatization. And today I present you uh, the new baby that we have. It's a electrostatic sprayer. So we have different model. Uh, we start with a table model. It's a model 0.1. When you have this number, that means it's uh, 0.1 uh, kilogram of, evap of water evaporation power and we can go up uh, to the model 200 kilogram of evaporation power so it's really easily to do this the scale up from the model 4 to the model uh, 200 and my colleague in us in the laboratory has the model 001 and the model 0032 close to chicago and the model one close to boston so thank you so much for your attention. If you want need more information about food air and electrostatic spread wire, feel free uh, to go to the website. You can also send an email to my colleague in US. So food air in information at spread.com. And if you have some any question about this presentation, feel free to send me an email at audrey.modui at spread.com. Thank you so much for your attention for one hour. It was really a pleasure for me to present you this really innovative technology. I really love her. Love it, sorry. And uh, see you soon. Have a good trade show.